Um, you might ne not necessarily think that these two things here uh, have much in common, but in fact, this mushroom here is mycorrhizal by nature, and it grows on and in the roots of the poplar tree on the right, uh, exchanging nutrients and water for carbohydrates that this uh, poplar tree makes using photosynthesis. And in this way, these two uh, different things can come together and help each other uh, grow. Now, of course, in a forest, you don't have one mushroom, you don't have one tree, and you have a whole network. And in this way, by joining with as many different possible elements as, as it can, uh, they create resiliency. So, as an example, this mushroom that has seven connections is more resilient than the one on the bottom uh, that has only three. Uh, but we can expand that even further, and we can go on to include, include things like squirrels, which may eat the mushrooms, uh, will live in the trees. We can include hawks, which eat the squirrels. We can even include non-living things like rivers, uh, which are all part of this net, this fabric. And we can take that to an extreme, and we can go to the ecosystem level. And when we do that, you end up with something called a mirror web. This web here represents an entire ecosystem. Each one of these little points on there represents an element. It could be living, it could be non-living. And each one of those lines represents a relationship that it has with another element. And in this way, all of these things come together and they create a net that captures nutrients, it captures sunlight, and it's cycled continuously. Many of the really successful designs that we have currently out there, such as the internet, uh, follow that same model. So in this case here, each one of these little points represents a website, each one of these lines here represents a link. So in that case, we're capturing information and we're passing it around, we're recycling it over and over again. This here, everybody's probably logged on to this at least once, to, once today. This is a social network. Each one of those pictures is a person, it could be you. And each one of those lines represents uh, a friend in your social network. Likewise, it's capturing information, it's capturing uh, uh, relationships. Now, things that are less resilient have less connections. So if you're an animal and you depend on one food source, you're in trouble when that food source disappears. If you're a culture and you depend on one source for energy, when that source for energy disappears, you're in trouble. So resiliency is really a measure of connections. And as a permaculturalist, uh, and that's what I want to talk about is permaculture design, uh, which is the science of creating connections. So fostering these, uh, building them up. This is an herb spiral, and its principle is, is on designing microclimates. So there's many microclimates within that one element there. But this can be applied in many situations. We have Michael Reynolds here who's been building something called Earth Ships. So he's taking garbage, he's taking trash, which I think you could say is a connection that hasn't been made, and he's building houses out of it. Not only that, but the way that the elements within this house are put together, it cycles the water five or six times before it leaves the house. So kind of following that ecosystem model. This is Richard Register. He's been taking this and applying it to a citywide scale. Uh, he's been trying to take um, high density living, lots of different uh, multi zoning, uh, and he likes to define cities as places uh, that maximize connections and minimize distances. So a good city should do that. He's been uh, living in Berkeley and he's been taking a look at the ecology that was there before the city was created and then. Um, taking the current map and trying to come up with an eco-zoning map, which I think, following permaculture principles, which are principles of ecology, I think we could be doing something like that in Edmonton. Uh, once again, making connections in permaculture. Uh, permaculturists have been working in Jordan, near the Dead Sea, and they've been taking uh, salt flat on the left there, and they've been turning it in a very short amount of time, just a year or two, into forest. So this is something that hasn't had anything living on it for uh, thousands of years, but by creating these connections, uh, they're creating resilient systems. This here is a food forest. Imagine this. This produces food, it produces fiber. Uh, using ecology, people are creating systems that not only provide for humans, but produce and create biodiversity. It builds soil out of time instead of depleting it. I've been very fortunate to have been working at Jasper Place High School uh, since February. We've been trying to create one of these food producing food forests. Uh, in the courtyard, and um, it's been a really great experience, and I'm hoping uh, we're going to continue it. And uh, and this is this here is uh, was the background. I'll keep going. <laughs> uh, but in order for that program, in order for any social program to continue, uh, you need to create connections within the school. This is a picture 
of, uh, of, of, of JP and to create this permaculture program, we've had to bring as many different departments in as possible. So we're creating food for the culinary program, we're creating a classroom for the science program, and in permaculture we often talk about how problems become solutions. This is our courtyard. You can see there's a lot of concrete on here. We thought, what a waste of space. We're not going to be able to grow anything there. But after examining a little bit further, we've realized that the water actually flows in such a way that we can we can capture the water that lands on there. So every single drop on that concrete ends up in the garden bed. And this, this, this food forest in the courtyard has at least six different ways of watering itself. So one of the big questions that I always got was, who's going to water it in the summer? Nobody. You don't need to water a forest. You don't need to fertilize a forest. It is self Propagating, You can walk away from it theoretically for hundreds or thousands of years and it will keep producing food, it will keep growing soil, it will keep becoming more biologically diverse um, without any human interaction. It's a system that's self-containing. And uh, we can do this in, in all sorts of contexts. Um, I think it's important to realize, especially for us that live in cities, that we're, we're not separate from ecology. We're a product of ecology. And by going back to those principles, going back to what makes ecology work and what makes it resilient, we can apply this in such a way that uh, better helps our design. So I'm going to leave you today saying go ahead and make those connections, meet people, uh, and uh, be resilient. <laughs>